Hi there and welcome to the channel of a disappointed man with me Jason Kennedy, the disappointed man. Now it is Tuesday and that means tags but nobody has seen fit to tag me this week and I'm left here once again like Miss Havisham gathering dust. No matter, I've been perusing booktube and I've identified a tag I believe I can do. It's called the philosophy of reading tag. It was created by Brandon over at Brandon's bookshelf. Now I've been fortunate enough to interact with Brandon on numerous occasions. He's a wonderful guy, and if you haven't checked out his channel, I strongly urge you to do so. Okay, there are 20 prompts, so let's begin. What matters more, good characters, a good plot, or a message? Presumably we're speaking about novels here, with mention of characters and plot. In that context, I don't really know what message means. Do novels have a message? I'm not convinced. I'll leave that to one side. With regard plot, there are not that many plots available in truth, so I'd settle upon character. Unconvincing characters can definitely spoil the reading experience. They can even make you put a book down. So I would say characters are the most important. Next. Should one read books that contain ideas and opinions one disagrees with? What is this, an ad for a sensitivity reader? that 21st century touchy-feely neologism for the thought police. You can be paid now to take offence to manuscripts before they're published. Put your pen through the lines that you don't like. This must go. This must be rewritten. Am I of the same cast of mind? Not at all. I can't really imagine a situation in which I would not wish to continue reading because of some ideas or opinions in the text and if I did encounter such a situation I would simply put the book down and pick up another one. It's old-fashioned but that would be my approach. Next. As technology advances what will be the role of books? Well things are not looking too rosy for books right now or for literacy in general and things may even be worse than one imagines. I read a truly alarming article yesterday in the Times Higher Education Supplement, I'll link to it, concerning students arriving at university incapable of holding direct face-to-face -face conversations with other human beings. That's because so much of their social interaction has been mediated by smartphones, tablets and laptops, and professors are even handing out scripts that students can use when they wish to contribute to the class, one of them read, I agree with what X said, and I wish to say, dot, dot, dot. Isn't that incredibly depressing? Isn't that infinitely bleak? So not only is literacy under threat, but oracy too. All I can say is that the disappointed man will still be sat here on his channel, surrounded by his books, even as the lights go out around him. Next. How important are summaries, reviews and artwork when choosing a book? Well, they don't really matter at all to me. I don't read reviews. I don't read summaries. I don't even read what's printed on the back of the book. As for artwork, if there is beautiful artwork adorning the cover, that's just wonderful. But it's not determinative in terms of whether I will buy a book or not. I did, however, do the tag video where I showed off the most beautiful books in my collection. If you're really interested, you can watch that next. Should one skim or scan a book? I'm not really sure about this prompt. Is there some moral aspect to this practice? When it comes to critical works, I skim and scan all the time. In fact, I will do the full PDF search in Acrobat and go through an entire folder of eBooks searching terms that I think may turn up something interesting. It's a form of data mining and it's essential to do my research. When it comes to visiting bookstores, I'll skim or scan a text while I'm considering whether to purchase it or not. And actually, in many of Taiwan's bookstores now, the ones that retail new books, they shrink wrap all the books. So you're not even able to have a look at them before you buy it. A practice I find absolutely intolerable. So yes, by all means, if you want to have my permission before you skim and scan, 
I grant it freely. Next. Should reading always be enjoyable? Well, it depends. Take my own situation, for example. I've just finished a master's in English literature. I've just started a PhD. And much of the secondary literature I have to read doesn't particularly interest me. It's often not very well written and it frequently repeats ideas I've encountered elsewhere. So no, it's not that enjoyable. If there's an instrumental aspect to one's reading, there will be that problem. However, the moment I turn away from my studies and engage with works of literature, I can more or less guarantee that I will greatly enjoy whatever I choose to read. So there we have it. Reading as a hobby, reading as a passion. Yes, reading for other reasons, not always. Thanks. Is it important to be well read? Well, I don't believe that it is anymore. And I recall reading about something called the facts effect. Bear with me and my meaning here will become clear. When there are only a few fax machines in use, each one was not very valuable, but as more and more people bought fax machines, the value of each of those machines increased. I believe when it comes to being well read, we're seeing the fax effect in reverse, as it were, as the number of well read people decreases, then the value of being well read decreases too. Next. What is your book buying process? Well, the price of new books in Taiwan is astonishing. A book that would retail for $10 in the US goes for $30 here. And for that reason, I try to buy as many books used as possible. When there's no alternative but to purchase them new, I use the internet, eBay or Book Depository. Next. What is your reading process? Well, I have two approaches, both of them critical and they differ in terms of degree. Firstly, if I'm going to write about a book, my approach is thoroughly destructive. I have an example here. It's Thomas Bernhard's Concrete. It's all tabbed up. And if I open it, you'll see all of the underlining and annotations there. So that's the most intense kind of engagement. And it's a very stop start process. Then the remainder of my reading, it's always in the back of my mind that I may wish to talk about it on the channel. So I retain a critical perspective, but I don't keep stopping. However, I'll be attentive to theme, how the work's constructed, any passages I may wish to quote, any references to other literary works or simply other works that it recalls for me. So that's how it works, basically. Next. How do you use what you read? Well, I'm extremely fortunate because I study literature. It's not hard for me to make use of what I read in my thesis. For example, I spent a year just with my head down, buried in the work of Thomas Bernhard and Denton Welsh, two writers I particularly admire. I've also written about Genet, De Quincey, Flannery O'Connor, Catherine Porter, and this semester, I plan to write about Pirandello, von Kleist and Kafka. So that's one of the great things about studying literature. You do feel that your reading has a purpose. Next. If you could download a book to your brain, would you still read? What a curious question. Of course I would still read. It's rather like asking if someone would prefer a nasogastric feeding tube to sitting down to a meal and to pursue the food analogy. Not only is the pleasure of reading in the process, in the chewing, as it were, but also that chewing is necessary for the digestion of what one has read next. What are your views on rereading? Well, I'm always baffled at discussion of this topic. No one ever says to someone who enjoys music, oh, why are you re-listening to that Beatles album? No one says to someone, who enjoys the visual arts. Why are you reviewing that painting by Da Vinci? But with books, it's supposedly something we need to address. There's also the fact that some readers limit their consumption to just a couple of genres, which effectively means that they're reading the same book over and over again, whether it's thrillers or horror. So I've got nothing against rereading. I actively reread. And my favourite books, I've often read them. I don't know. 
three, four, five times. Each time you find something new, don't you? Next. What makes a book good? Well, there is, of course, a subjective approach. You read a book, you enjoy it, therefore it's good. But reflecting a little more deeply, I'd identify three aspects. Firstly, the author must know what they're doing. Secondly, they must care about what they're doing. And lastly, their artistic ambition must not exceed their capacities. Conversely, bad books fail for a want of skill, a want of care, or due to an excess or lack of ambition. Next. How do you feel about not finishing a book? I feel just fine. As my wife will testify upon occasion, I will simply hurl a book across the room and say, I'm done with this. Other times, I'll give a sigh of resignation, gently shut the book and place it back on the shelf and simply move on to something else. There's no shame in not finishing a book. Next. Should an author's personal life matter at all? Well, I have a rather paradoxical view on this question. That is, reading about an author's life may enhance one's understanding and appreciation of their work, but it should never be allowed to detract from their work. That is, the work stands apart from the person who produced it. That person could be an absolutely terrible example of a human being, but they may still have produced a masterpiece. Next. If you could only read one genre for the rest of time, which would it be? Well, I answered this question in a previous tag video, and there I chose the Gothic, and I see no reason to change that response. There are so many great Gothic novels, Frankenstein, Dracula, The Monk, Malmoth the Wanderer, H.P. Lovecraft, Edgar Allan Poe. Do I need to go on? It would definitely be Gothic fiction. Next. Do you ever read a book without knowing anything about it? Absolutely. In fact, this is increasingly the approach I take. I don't read what's written on the back. I certainly don't read the introduction until I finish the main text. And the reason I've adopted this tactic is because having already read so much, it's possible to become a little jaded. This helps me to restore freshness to my reading. I really enjoy not knowing what I'm going to encounter. Next. What author, genre, series or culture can you just not get into? I answered this on a previous tag video too, and there I said, anything featuring wizards or elves, and I see no reason to move from that position. I'm not going to say any more at the risk of upsetting anyone. Next. Do you think everyone should read? Why? Well, my answer may surprise here, but with regard to adults, I would say no. For most adults, reading amounts to a hobby, and what makes it better than any other hobby one might choose, whether it's hiking or playing tennis? With regard to children, however, and speaking as a teacher, I believe every child should have the opportunity to read, and if that produces a lifelong love of reading, that's just wonderful. So there we have it. That was the last prompt. Thank you for watching. All that remains is for me to bid you farewell. So until the next time, be safe, be strong. Nanu Nanu.